What's going on one and all, welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are all doing well, staying at home, isolated, keeping fit, running once a day, staying home and doing yoga, I don't know man, meditation, eating well, hopefully taking this opportunity to put yourself in better health and all that good gear, maybe reading more, I don't know, anyway, I do hope you're well, welcome back to the channel, welcome to a news update style of video where I want to talk about Philippe Coutinho, now, I want to talk about Coutinho, I have a, quite a lot recently, but there's been some news reported today by Sport that Chelsea are really interested and are negotiating a deal to potentially get Coutinho on a one year loan, so I want to talk about that, because apparently Barcelona still want maybe a little bit too much money uh, or more than what Chelsea would want to spend for a permanent transfer they're left in a bit of a precarious financial position with Coutinho Barcelona I think they're going to lose regardless because of the amount they spent on him originally anyway if he's not on the plans they have an opportunity here of a loan which I'm going to tell you about in just a moment but first a reminder to you to subscribe <laughs> <laughs> if you've not yet done so, I keep telling people that the majority of my viewers are not subscribed, I've looked at the analytics, so if you do watch my vids, and if you enjoy them, firstly, I'd request that you like the video, because that helps me out a lot, but come on man, why not subscribe? Just do it. Anyway, let's get on with it. So, I want to do a flashback in a moment for Philippe Coutinho's statistics, which I did in the video like a week or so ago. I'm going to show you some of the numbers and metrics again in a piece of footage to offer you guys context of what kind of player Chelsea would potentially be getting and what he could offer this Chelsea Football Club side. Because a lot of people, and understandably say, Coutinho doesn't fit in or he perhaps is not a problem position or he shouldn't be a big target and I get it I get it I think Chelsea are just being opportunists in this instance and getting some real quality where perhaps they're lacking Frank Lampard's reiterated or echoed the sentiment throughout the season how often they're lacking that little bit of quality in the final third and someone like Philippe Coutinho who absolutely ripped apart the Premier League when he was in it could be that little now that game changer I guess so Chelsea have heavily been linked to Philippe Coutinho of late for a transfer but things are changing apparently Chelsea are now making an inquiry to loan the player from Barcelona Sport published an article explaining how Chelsea are looking to get the player on loan while also paying his entire salary and a loan fee on top to appease the Catalan giants Barcelona Coutinho's wages would be about a quarter of a million a week, which sounds like a lot, but it's about right. 140 million pounds signing to Barcelona. He, you know, in his prime, he's gonna be on about 250k a week. He's still probably what 150k less than what Alexis Sanchez was on at Man United. <laughs> for context so yes it's an incredible amount of money but he'll still be getting paid less than N'Golo Kante at Chelsea so you know you can't can kind of understand the wages if it was anything less than 200 I'd be like damn that's cheap point being 250k a week Chelsea would of course pay the wages but they're also offering a 13 million pound loan fee as well which is the real tempting part from Barcelona if they've got a player like Coutinho who's not going to really be in the plan so much um, they've you know they've got quarter of a million a week a million pounds a month on wages to a player that they're not using so they immediately want to get that off the books to sort of loosen up financial fair play and all that but if they're getting if they're you know getting an extra 13 million on top for a loan fee suddenly they have to think hmm this is interesting and if he does well at Chelsea maybe Chelsea will buy him at the end of the loan spell so you can understand why it could be really appealing to Barcelona. Now, Philippe Coutinho's agent's trying to get him out of Barcelona and he will want him to come to Chelsea. And also, apparently, Marina Granovskaya had contacted Barcelona a few days ago in terms of an actual transfer. But today's headlines are indeed pretty much saying that it's sort of developed and evolved into a new proposal, which is a loan deal. And actually, this is really, really interesting because the Chelsea fan base in many ways a split on the um, the Coutinho topic really a lot of people say yes I'd love him a lot of people say no I think in many ways this loan deal appeases the masses and everyone can come together and be excited by the potential transfer of Philly Coutinho to Chelsea now I want to take a few couple of minutes to do a flashback to a video where I basically run through all of his numbers telling you there how good Philippe Coutinho is certainly was in the Premier League when he was playing in English football 
and gives you some context of the kind of quality. So let's flash back to that clip now. And he's demonstrated he can tear up the Premier League. He's cool in that environment, and I'll tell you why. So remember the season he went to Barcelona, he pretty much stopped playing for Liverpool. He went on strike, and sure, this off is an immediate red flag in terms of demonstrating poor behaviour, but remember, I remember the Chelsea fans singing, Where is Coutinho? Where is Coutinho? Which is obviously pretty funny. That season, he got 20 goal contributions across the Premier League and the Champions League. Central midfielder, you know, playing in the midfield free, pretty good numbers, but look closer. He didn't actually play much at all because he went on a supposed strike or whatever. So these numbers are actually incredible. He contributed to 13 Premier League goals in just 13 appearances. That's right, one goal involvement per appearance that season from central midfield. Oh my giddy aunt, hang out, it gets better in a moment. Oh yeah, <laughs> nearly forgot to say, in that season as well, wait, before he we went on strike, six goal involvements in four appearances in the Champions League. The two most competitive competitions in the world, the Premier League and the Champions League, no problem for Coutinho at that point. So right, chill, okay, so he scores a lot of goals, he assists a lot of goals, but we, if you know Coutinho, if you've watched him before, you know that's not really just his game. He is a creative midfielder, very, very creative, and he's a very good ball carrier slash dribbler. That season, Philippe Coutinho averaged 2.7 key passes per game, that's right, 2.7. You look at the likes of Mason Mount is doing 1 to 1.5, which is okay but 2.7 per game, very, very creative indeed. And he doesn't just have to play the creative pass or take a shot or try and play an assist. He is a ball carrier as well. Three dribbles per game on average over the Premier League and the Champions League. Again, two very competitive competitions, three dribbles per game. Nearing the Eden Hazard numbers, but being more of a sort of creative midfielder playing between the lines, but scoring on and assisting a lot of goals as well. This wasn't a fluke season that got his move to Barcelona. The season before where he played nearly a whole season, perhaps he was out a little bit with a fatigue or injury, he got 20 Premier League goal involvements. Again, from central midfield, 20 Premier League goal involvements is an incredibly handsome return. Now, this is only the two last seasons he played in the Premier League. The way we talk about him, or the way I'm talking about him might sound, oh yeah, he's really old now, pull him back. He's 27! And we're back! What do you think? <laughs> so weird filming this, knowing there's going to be a break. But hey, I know that bit of footage explains to you exactly how good he is and the numbers that he was posting in the Premier League when he was knocking about Liverpool. It's very, very impressive indeed. This player is still going to be in his prime. He's basically got a sort of... He's got something to prove now a little bit as well because obviously he went to Barcelona, he's gone to Bayern Munich, he still showed moments of brilliance and quality but he hasn't shone like he did shine in the Premier League and he'll be looking to do that again while he's still young. So Chelsea can capitalise off that as well. Frank Lampard plays an attacking brand of pressing football that Coutinho basically plays in something very similar in the earlier Jurgen Klopp days and he could see a great opportunity to like basically be on a, a like the world stage again and be playing really well. Don't just think about the numbers that I've reminded you of as well. Try and cast your mind back to when Philippe Coutinho left Liverpool. Everyone was like, how are Liverpool going to deal with losing their best player? Granted, they dealt with it amazing, actually got better and won the Champions League. <laughs> so no criticisms to Liverpool there because they did exactly what they needed to do. But remember the perception at the time. He was undoubtedly Liverpool's best player. A great side, he was the best player, you know. Would he be the best player now? I don't know, maybe. Maybe he would be if you put him back in and he stayed at the club. He probably could be this, their best player still. Point being, it was like a big thing, like, you know, Philippe Coutinho at Liverpool, a great attacking team, their best players going to Barcelona for 140 million. That wasn't that long ago. And people who are split on the idea of Coutinho coming to Chelsea, that's that player coming to Chelsea on a potential loan deal that's relatively low risk. Think about it, Coutinho, Ziyech, Kovacic, Pulisic. Suddenly the names are starting to roll off the tongue a little bit in Chelsea's starting 11 and quality is starting to flood 
stack in. You know, you had some like promising young academy players in there as well, a bit of romance, a bit of romance into the team, and it's something you got a really likable, attacking, classy, talented squad, man. Don't you think? Anyway, of course, I'm going to keep you guys updated every single day on what happens with the Philippe Coutinho to Chelsea story while we are all in lockdown and quarantine. So check by Football Therapy every single day and I will keep you guys updated. But if you've enjoyed this video today, guys, I'd really appreciate it if you liked the video and remember to subscribe if you are indeed new to the channel. Get down in the comment section below and let me know your thoughts on the player and how you think Chelsea could look next season. Do you think it's a good move or not? Follow me on Instagram, I'm doing live streams every day at Football Yannick. That's it from me guys. You don't enjoy the football that is not happening at the moment and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I love me, baby.